So let's go ahead into the scripts folder, right click and create JavaScript, um, and we'll name this teleport. Okay, and we're going to open this up. The first thing we're going to need it to do is know where we want the position of the player to go. So we're going to say var target is um, is a game object. That's what I mean to say. So this variable will hold the other teleporter, and uh, and it'll let us know where to move the player. Okay. So then what we're going to do is in function start, uh, I don't think we need anything here. I'm not sure if we need the update. Uh, let's go with function on trigger enter like we always do. And say other collider. Okay, so we're checking for what is colliding. And if we say if other dot tag equals player as the player entered the trigger, and then we want to reassign the player's position to the new portal. So what we're going to do is say other dot game object dot transform dot position is equal to target. Actually, we need to do something different. We need to say vector three target dot position dot x target dot position dot y and uh, zero okay because they're on the on the z plane our layers in our sandwich the player is always at zero okay so this just verifies that even if we put the teleporter way in the background they're going to show up in front of it okay rather than in the middle of the particles that's why we put a zero in for the last vector three okay now the other thing we need to do is that if we go to our unity window here you'll notice that right now our um, portal transform is this position in the center okay that's at the bottom what we needed to do is actually spawn the player in the portal at a higher position further up now we could add a game object to this and then reassign the position of the player to the other portals little added game object empty or whatever but we're just going to make this easier by saying target position plus um, or target position dot y plus two. It might even need to be less than that. We'll just um, actually you know what we're going to do. We're going to say adjust, and then at the top we will make a new variable. So var adjust is a float. And what this would let us do is inside the Unity editor window, it will allow us to adjust how high up from the portal we want the player to spawn. Okay, so we just say. Save all that. Uh, we don't need function starter update, just the on trigger. Okay, so then um, what we're going to do is go back into our Unity window, wait for it to finish compiling. Uh, position is not a member of Unity game object. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is target.transform.position. That's my bad. Transform.position. Okay, so then we go back into Unity and it compiles and we're good to go so now we have our portal we can actually grab our teleport script and drag it on here and our new target needs to be another portal so I'm going to grab this object in the hierarchy press control D to duplicate it and move it up to the top level okay and that's where it's going to sit So this portal will beam you to this one and this one will be back, but they need to be connected first, okay? So what we need to do is take this game object and drag it into our first portal. So we're going to go to the first portal, grab the second one, and drag its game object over. Go to the second one and link the first one. Okay? So now what we've got are these two portals here and here. And if I go ahead and play my game object here, play my game, and I run over and I jump up here and I try to avoid the enemy that moves way too fast and I jump. Oh, I forgot that that platform moves and that this bounce is set way too high. <laughs> you see what happens? We get an error. 
Okay, and what's happening right now in the middle of this epileptic seizure, sorry, is that you're entering this trigger and then you're immediately entering this trigger and you're bouncing back and forth between the two. So what we need to do is add in some lag. Okay, we're actually intentionally making the teleport system lag between the two. Okay. So the player has entered the trigger and we want him to teleport. But we need to know if he entered this trigger from another teleporter. Okay, so in order to do that, we can do this one of two ways. We can store it in the player's script. We can create a new script that stores the variable teleported. And then when they leave, then they're good. So what we're going to do here is actually inside the um, teleport object. Uh, let me think about this for a second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry that took so long. Actually, for you, it was probably less than a second. Um, I figured out how to do this, and we're going to do it right here in this script with the link between the two teleports. Because this teleport is only ever linked to another teleport and not a different game object, um, what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to add in another variable at the top, and we're going to call this one bar jump, and it's going to be a boolean. Okay, so down here in the untrigger enter, before we move the player, we're actually going to call the target object, and we're going to get its teleport script with dot get component and we're going to say teleport because that's the name of the script on the other portal and then we're going to say dot jump equals true okay so if this is the receiving teleporter we need to make sure that jump is not true so we say if not jump then we want this to happen Okay, so this script is going on two of the exact same object. So let's say for the first time we're jumping into the new portal, the one at the bottom. We jump in, the jump variable is false, so it says, yeah, we haven't jumped. Is the object colliding with my trigger, the player? Well, yes, it is. Okay, well, where are we jumping to? We're jumping to the new target. Well, let's make sure that that target knows that we're jumping by telling it, the second portal, that its jump variable is true. Okay? And then we'll move the game object, the player. So when the player jumps into the new portal, or the second portal, the receiving one at the top, it's going to say, oh, okay, my jump variable is true, and it's going to come down here and say, okay, the player just showed up, Oh, but jump is true, so I don't need to move him. Okay? So then what we're going to do to make sure that we turn jump back off is we are going to say function on trigger exit. We're going to make sure that the player is the object that left by saying other and collider. We're going to say if other.tag equals player, making sure that the player left the portal, we're going to go ahead and turn jump back to false. Okay? So the player is going to jump into the first portal. The first portal is going to call the second and say, hey, I'm sending you a player, and this is a jump. We're jumping him up to you. So your jump is now set to true. And the second portal goes, okay, my jump is equal to true. And then the player enters. It skips the on trigger enter because jump is now true. So it skips all this stuff. And then it sits there and it waits for the player to exit. When the player exits, it says, okay, the player's gone. I can turn my jump back off now. And when the jump turns off, if you re enter the portal, you jump back to the first one. And the, or you, you jump back to the first portal. That's right. And it tells the first portal, oh, hey. Your jump is now true, and I'm sending the player back. So this is the basic teleport system. Uh, we didn't end up using function start or update, so we don't need those. Okay. And if you want to, you can go ahead and make... Uh, well, actually, you have to leave the jump as a public variable because it's being accessed by a different game object. Okay. So this one has to be public. You cannot make it private. So we save this. Go back to our video. Our first portal now has a jump. And so if I sit here and press play and I walk across the map here and I jump on my bad guy or I miss him and I bounce and I'm just gonna walk off here and then jump into this oh 
But you see how my player didn't fall through the portal, but he fell through the map. He fell through the platform, and that's because we never changed our adjustment value. So let's go ahead and adjust that. We'll say one for each portal. And now if I'm actually going to move this portal, the first one over to, if I can get that arrow, over to the beginning of the game so we, uh, so we don't have to walk four miles to get there. Okay, so if I walk over and I hit this one, oop, I pop out, and I'm still in the trigger zone, but as soon as I leave and come back in, it pops me back to the first one. Boop! And I can now teleport across the map. And you can see my camera instantly updates with my player because it's still tracking that player object with the smooth follow script. Okay? So the next thing we need to do, and this is added extra if you want to, is we're going to declare in this space in between var c1 is a color. Now this is a variable type we've never seen before, and that's because it's actually a class in Unity that allows you to define your own color. Okay? What we're going to do is um, bring the function start back, and we are going to take the particle renderer, the material that we use for our particles, and we're going to change its color to match that of our um, of whatever color we want. We're going to assign it to this color. Okay, so what we're going to do is say, um, what was it? Uh, get component particle. Actually, what we need to do is get the um, renderer, the lowercase r, render dot material dot color is equal to C1. And that's it. So we've referenced the game object, which has a, a, a part called a renderer, which draws it on the screen. We're going to grab the material we've assigned to it, and we're going to change its color to C1. This might work. I might need to reference the particle system. I'm not sure. Let's try it out and see what happens. Okay, so I've got my system here, and it's finished compiling my code, and now I have this C1 color bar, which is set to black and transparent. So you'll need to turn the alpha all the way up, and I want to set it to a green color. Okay, so when the game begins, you'll see these white particles turn to a green color, if it works. So we'll see here. Let's play that. And there they are. And they're green. Okay, but that's only for this one portal. This portal is turning green. Let's say this portal up here, I want to be a different color. Or maybe the same color. So I can make it green, the exact same color if I want to, or I can make it um, pink if I want. So let's make that one pink so we can tell them apart. Okay, so if I hop into the green teleporter, I pop out of the pink one. If I leave the pink teleporter collision area and I jump back in, I pop out of the green one and back again. And we'll jump down here. Oh, and I fell into the old teleporter. So I'm, right now I'm on my bouncy platform. Almost made it. Let's try this again. Nope, not going to make it. Let's go down to the bottom one. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, I can walk around this portal, but until I get far enough away to leave the trigger, it's not going to let me teleport back. So if we take this, these two portals, which are now linked together, and I, sh and I just uh, shift and click on both of them to select both. So select one, shift, left click on the other, and I control D to duplicate them. I can drag them over, let them go. This portal should now be linked to the this one. So let's change the color of that one to uh, orange. And we'll make the color of our last one, this one up here, we'll make that one bluish in color. And let's play the game. And I jump into the green one and I pop out of the pink. There's our blue one. Let's see what happens when I hop into the orange one here. I pop out of the blue one. If I jump into the blue one, I pop out of the orange and I fall out of the map. And the reason is because this portal again, uh, actually the adjustment on that portal is right. It's set to 1. Maybe we need to increase that a little bit. Let's set it to 1.5. Okay, and that's basically the teleport system. Uh, the script for this, right here, less than 25 lines. Again, very simple, uh, even with the color settings. If you want to add more special effects to your particles, 
um, or perhaps want to do some other stuff with that you can do it inside the particle system add effects maybe you want to add a little glowing or you want to change the material to something that you think looks better you can um, you can change the color based off the speed all kinds of different effects you can make happen here in the uh, particle system let's see here uh, maybe I want to do one uh, rotation here's a good one rotation angular velocity 45 so now my cubes will spin well, at least they should oh I'm sorry that's for this particle one I want to set it for the first one there it is okay so we go into rotation over lifetime check the little circle to turn it on set the angular velocity to 45 and when I play the game you see my little cubes are spinning okay and that's pretty fun to do uh, you can do rotation by speed force whatever you want to do in here you can change any of this stuff all right thanks for watching